I'm slightly overdressed today. But it's a little bit cold outside. We're getting ready to do a wheel bearing right here on this 2010 Audi A4 Quattro I sold like three years ago. First, we gotta take the wheel off. Let's just get started. Hook the wheel cap. The wheel is off the ground. We're gonna use our old snap-on impact this time, see if it's got enough gumption. That's not a bad idea to keep one slightly in there. I don't... And as you can tell, the wheel is stuck. Get back here with the little donkey kick. First I tried on the top and then I went side to side. And as you can tell, since one lug stud it's still on there a little bit usually it's best to do the top one the wheel didn't just fall off i got a little bit more control it really needs brakes but we got to take this set screw out now you typically don't want to be using power tools on this set screw right here, but sometimes I don't listen to my own advice. If you use an impact on this like that, then it can potentially bounce out and strip this bolt out because sometimes these can seize in there pretty good since there's so much heat. We successfully extracted the set screw. Now, this is something that gets lost easier than anything else. Make sure you put that in a good spot. Do a little trick. I'm still going to do a video on a stress test. Someone's going to steal my idea, how much you want to bet. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I talked about it in one of my other videos, but I'll get to it here in the next, uh, next few days, maybe. Next week, maybe. But I'm not going to say more than that, because someone will steal my idea. I see people stealing my videos already. You know? Not that they're that great, but maybe I'm just being a conspiracy theorist. Maybe they would come up with the same idea anyway. Probably. The brake pads look good, but the rotors are pretty shot. So I'm just going to lay that right there. And then this rotor is going to be seized on here as well. Let's see if this 14 pound copper hammer is gonna do the trick. Just as I suspected, not enough room to pull it out. Now we gotta get these two bolts out for this caliper bridge right here. These are some of the toughest bolts to get out of the whole car. They got the most torque on them. So I got this extendable breaker bar and I'm gonna to try to break them loose by hand. I got it extended all the way now. Now that I'm clear of the fender here. Make sure it's fully seated or it'll slip off. And then this top one here. Well, popped out. All right, where'd it go? Back on. Once they're broken loose, I prefer to move over to something to speed the thing up. So I'll go to 3 8 
bridge will slide off. I already busted the rotor loose. Now I got to get to these bolts on the back of this hub bearing, but they're hard to get to because I got this big CV axle in my way, this big drive axle. See how rusty these bolts are? And this is aluminum steering knuckle. And this is a steel bearing right here. The first thing I gotta do is get this bolt out right here and I completely forgot all about it. I could bust it loose by hand when it's going through the axle and then the thing that's stopping it is the other wheel. I'm out of practice, folks. I know better. I've done hundreds of wheel bearings, to tell you the truth. Too much rust to fit the socket in there. All the way flush. this one right here even though it isn't all that long you're putting a lot of stress on the whole drive line I don't really like doing this so I'm gonna toss the rotor back on this doesn't take that long The vents on these rotors are not ideal, but I do have this uh, old Craftsman Professional like uh, shank. So I'm gonna stick that right in here, butt it up against this caliper bridge right here, and we'll give it another go. See, that wasn't too bad. Now we can take these bolts out, these rusty bolts with this big, fat, ugly axle back here causing us problems. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and knock this axle free. So I'm gonna put these threads in a little bit and I'm gonna take my old copper hammer. That didn't take much at all. And that'll keep that axle back far enough to where I can get to these bolts a little bit easier from the backside. Now, as you can see, there's limited clearance right here. These are some triple square bolts and we got this axle it's easier to get to them since we pushed this axle back but they're still a little bit tricky to get to now I got this uh, VIM socket that I ground a little bit you don't necessarily have to but I just did this for certain applications this one fits really easy down here and I could get to it with a 3 8 ratchet but this extension makes it a little bit too long. This is a Harbor Freight extension. This is um, a 3 8 drive to half inch. So that's kind of nice. You can apply a bigger drive ratchet on it or breaker bar on it. But like I said, this is this extension is too long. I don't need it right here, but I do need it up here 
So to clear all this boot and everything, I'm just gonna keep the same one on there. Try to break this bottom one loose free first. Let's see if I can get you just a little bit better of a view. Maybe I could even put the impact on it. I don't know. That would be some good luck if I could. But these bolts give me problems. That one came out. That was nice. Let's see about this top one. Okay, I'm, I could probably get it, but you're in the way. You're in the way. Yeah, that's a good angle. Nice. And now I can use this. I'm gonna have to turn the steering wheel to get to these other two. Now with the steering wheel turned, you see I have these other two. This one tucked way down in here, which is hard to get to. And this one up here, which is easier to get to, fits right in. And because of the camera angle, you're, you're not going to be able to see too good, but I'm going to try with the impact. And it came out no problem. First, we're going to slide the bit in. You see it's... Well, you can't really see that, but it's just almost not clearing this nut down here. So I'm going to put my extension on it. And it's almost too long of an extension very well on either side. We'll give it a go anyway. That was enough to get it free. I gotta go a little bit longer with my extension, even though it's broken loose. This, uh, this tie rod that's blocking your view is also blocking my ability to get this ratchet in here. I wanted to show how to do this bearing by hand, removing it from a hub assembly, from a steering knuckle. I've had all kinds of success in the past with just grinding a little notch in the bearing, in the bearing housing, so that you can get a chisel behind it. You wanna have a really nice, good, flat chisel. Everybody should have a set of chisels. Obviously, everybody should have hammers. Everybody should have some type of battery-powered grinder. If you don't have a battery-powered grinder, you can get a plug-in grinder from one of these cheap places like Harbor Freight. I hate to even say their name, but it's going to cost you less than 20 bucks for a plug-in grinder. And you should have a battery-powered grinder because that's just so convenient. And you're going to be able to attach wire wheels to it, different size cutoff wheels. Uh, you're going to use it for all kinds of stuff. So that's something that you should have if you don't have it already. I use it all the time. One of my most used tools is a grinder. So you cut a little slot or you cut a little angle into the bearing assembly and then you can get a nice flat chisel behind it and sometimes that's all you need to get that bearing out. This one, I had to pull out the air hammer and that's why I front load this video with the air hammer deal. And I know everybody's going to tell me I'm hanging the brake hose off the caliper, stretching out the brake hose, I'm going to mess it up. But how many of those people that tell me that have actually damaged a brake hose? I can't tell you how many calipers I hung off to the side and I've never to this day damaged a brake hose. So I'm not discouraging people from getting their little bailing wire, their little mechanics wire and hanging it or their little special hook. But that first time that you hang it up high and then it breaks off that little wire or breaks off the hook and then yanks that, uh, that 
brake hose, that's way worse than just gently laying it there and letting the weight of the caliper hang off the hose. And that's the test I'll do on this video and that I'm gonna do in the future. I'm gonna do a stress test on brake hoses, but I'm probably gonna do it in the junkyard. Or maybe I'll just buy a few junkyard hoses, or maybe I'll do it on my own car. I haven't decided yet, because uh, I gotta do a real world test on that. But ultimately I had to break out the air hammer, the Milwaukee air hammer. The Actually, it's a Matco long barrel air hammer, which I would suggest getting a shorter air hammer because this thing is way too long to be practical. Uh, I got a snap on one somewhere. I couldn't find it. Uh, I would find it if I spent some time to look for it. But anyway, it's nice to have a short barrel air hammer. But the snap on one I got is really old. It's not as powerful. But believe it or not, my little battery powered impact, my, I'm sorry, my battery powered air compressor is enough to power the air hammer, which is pretty impressive, but I can only do it in short bursts. But while I was waiting for the air compressor to build its pressure back up, I would just switch over to the torch and that gave me some time. So I wasn't frustrated enough. I was actually doing something the whole time, either using the air hammer or using the torch. And really it only took about five minutes. And I know everybody's gonna tell me you should get the hub, the, what's it called? The hub shocker or whatever. I just haven't yet bought one. Eventually I will, but I might have to make my own or maybe I will buy the one. I don't know. I started to make my own tool uh, for this job and I got halfway through and I was going to make a video on how I made my own hub shocker, but I was on a budget for time. That's why I didn't actually finish this video out. I was going to show pressing the the old hub out, cutting the bearing race off the, the old flange, and then pressing the flange back into the new bearing. And then I was also gonna show installing, but I didn't get to, I didn't, I didn't have time. But we'll do that in a different video. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and Naptown Tuner.